Welcome to the next episode in our cell unit. Um, this unit is on cell energetics. Um, this podcast, sorry, is on cell energetics. Really focusing on photosynthesis and cell re- cellular respiration, which we've alluded to and you have a web quest on um, that you've already completed. So this is just kind of give you a few more details than um, the web quest did. Um, these are the two targets that you should be able to um, to define and meet by the end of this. Um, but I want you to add a, a word here. Uh, I know I can describe the equation of, let's add, aerobic cellular respiration. Um, we're talking about aerobic respiration in this podcast. Ask me about anaerobic in class, okay? All right, so jot that down, pause it if you need to, and let's get started. So the equation for cellular respiration, uh, this should just, this should be review and you've already um, seen the inputs and outputs from the web quest. Um, but a good way to remember this is that cellular respiration <clears throat> is a process that we as animals, as humans do. Um, and so if we think about the things that we need to survive, it helps to uh, put this equation together. So we know that we need to um, eat food, and really what we're looking for is glucose. Um, We need to breathe in oxygen. I'm gonna go ahead and write it as O2, that's the oxygen gas. And this uh, leads to, uh, when we're breathing out carbon dioxide, plus water, plus lots and lots of ATP. also asked me about ATP in class and um, we'll fill in some notes there because that's one of the targets that you need to know. So um, this is the overall equation but I just want to add that these are the inputs and that these things over here on the end are the outputs and sometimes these inputs are called uh, reactants and these outputs are called products, or what was produced. These are the things that we went in to react, and these are the things that were produced from the reaction. All right, so let's talk a little bit about where where these things get used. Um, so I'm going to copy down a pretty crude um, mitochondria as bad, as a bad diagram, but that's okay. You get the idea. You remember what what I'm uh, drawing here, and then it's got all these folds in the middle of it. All right. So um, I'll tell you that the first reaction is called glycolysis, and actually it happens outside of the mitochondria. It happens in the cytoplasm of the cell. Um, so the input that is used here is glucose. Glucose is the input and it gets broken down into two separate molecules. If you remember what glucose, uh, the molecule is, it's actually C6H12O6. Um, so it's got six carbons in it. So what happens is that it gets broken down into two separate molecules that are both, they're called pyruvate. Um, And so if glucose starts at a six carbon molecule, you can figure out how many carbons are in each of the pyruvates. But if we follow one of the pyruvates, it goes through a process where it goes into the middle of the mitochondria it actually gives off the carbon dioxide in the process, but it finds the sec. It does the second process in the middle here, which is called the matrix. So I want you to write that down. The glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. The Krebs cycle happens in the matrix. <clears throat> and what happens here? Well, bef- I guess before we get there, I should mention that um, by breaking this in half, we get some ATP out, some energy molecules, and another molecule that's called NADP, sorry, NADH. Um, 
and this carries electrons which we're going to see come back a little later. The Krebs cycle um, gives off some more carbon dioxide. It also makes um, just a couple more ATP and some more NADPHs and FADH2s which is another electron carrier. But it's really in this third step that happens right here all along this fold, this inner fold. Um, I'm going to just do my best here. Um, in this third process called the electron transport chain. Again, the electron transport chain. I want you to write it out. I'm just abbreviating it here. The NADPH and the FADH2s that were made here in the Krebs cycle and here um, in glycolysis are used. Oxygen, remember we've had glucose as one of our inputs, we used over here in glycolysis. Oxygen gets used here in the Krebs cycle, um, goes in, and what comes out is lots of ATP, which is one of our products. We've already got carbon dioxide, and we've also got water coming out. So we actually uh, make a little bit of water. We break down water in uh, one process, but here we're, go we're making water. Um, so really what happened was this NADPH and FADH2 gave up some of their hydrogens <coughs> um, to go into the water molecule. So the hydrogens and the oxygen recombine to make H2O. Um, and lots and lots of ATP, which is the energy molecule that we're trying to make. Okay, um, if you have any questions about this process, please, please write them down. Uh, write them down now before you finish the podcast. So pause, write them down, and then we'll talk about them in class. Okay, so let's move on to photosynthesis and talk really about where does this glucose and the oxygen come from that we need to make all this ATP, which is really the goal of cellular respiration. Okay. All right, so we should already know the equation for photosynthesis. <clears throat> and this, this equation, um, think about what plants need. They need water and carbon dioxide. They need some light. And what they give off is our C6H12O6 glucose molecule plus oxygen. You might notice from having just written the cellular respiration equation that this is actually kind of the reverse except that here we have light and the reason I put it over the arrow is because this is energy and not matter. Um, <clears throat> the energy in this light molecule, in this light gets uh, converted into the chemical bonds that make up this glucose molecule. But let's talk about how this happens and where this happens. <clears throat> um, you should know that photosynthesis happens inside of a chloroplast. Go ahead and draw that. Inside the chloroplast there are these pancake looking things. <coughs> I'm going to draw a couple of these. And there are lots and lots of these stacks of pancakes. Now remember, I'm going to just remind you that there's a little bit of DNA floating around. Remember chloroplasts have DNA. Um, it's just not in a nucleus, but it's just floating around. We've got lots and lots of these stacks, and we have more stacks over here, but I'm not going to draw them because it's going to complicate our, our understanding of what's happening here in photosynthesis. Um, but it's really this these green pancakes that I'm going to label. Um, they're called thylakoids. Thylakoids. It's their membrane, or the edges of these pancakes, that have the chlorophyll. So you might remember chlorophyll from sounds great, but that's the pigment that makes the plants green, and that's really what's absorbing the light. So, <clears throat> remember, photo means light. So, we've got our sun that's shining light on our thylakoids. Plants need, and one of the reactants of this process, is water. Um, so, water is going to come in. And what the thylakoids do is that they actually, what comes out of this, this first process is um, oxygen. 
it gives off some oxygen as a byproduct. It's not going to use that oxygen. That oxygen just goes into the atmosphere. It's really handy for us and for plants when they do cellular respiration. Because remember, plants have mitochondria too, and they need that ATP just as much as we do. So it gives this off, and I just want to make sure that you understand that this is this reaction, this first reaction is called the light dependent reaction. Okay? So this first process is the light dependent reaction. But there's actually another byproduct besides the oxygen. Um, and it's just a couple of ATP that are going to be used up as energy molecules in the next process. And another molecule we'll call NADPH, which I know is confusing with NADH from cellular respiration. But remember that P is in here. So that may be help you remember that it's photosynthesis. P goes with photosynthesis. All right, so this next uh, part happens in this um, in the, the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. And really, I just want to label that the syrupy stuff we'll call the stroma, okay? So this is where the second phase happens, <clears throat> which is called not the light dependent, but the light independent reaction, also known as the Calvin cycle, okay? <clears throat> and it's another process that goes on in here. We're not going to go into a lot of detail because there's a lot to it. <clears throat> but what comes in, excuse me, what comes into it is our CO2, and what comes out is our C6H12O6. The carbon came from the carbon dioxide, the hydrogens came from the NADPH, and the oxygen came from the carbon dioxide. What comes out of this reaction is ADP plus P and NADP plus. So it's given off its hydrogen, it's coming back to get some more hydrogen from the breaking of water. So this NADP plus and NADPH molecule is kind of recycled over and over, carrying one piece from the light dependent reaction to the to the light independent reaction. Same with the ADP and ATP. And again, write down a question about ATP and ADP so that we have something to talk about in class, okay? And that should wrap up um, the, th the, the two reactions of cellular respiration and photosynthesis, what the inputs and outputs of each stage are, and where those stages occur, okay? If you have questions, again, jot them down or rewatch, or um, you're already online, look it up. All right, so let's, um, Let's make sure we understand these two processes because there is a lot going on and you are expected to know it, okay?